Good afternoon, and welcome to the Wednesday afternoon conference call with Trusts Unlimited. This is Jim George speaking. I'm the non-attorney spokesman and facilitator for Trusts Unlimited, and I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to listen to this call, particularly those of you calling in for the first time, and those who will be listening to our replay over the next 24 to 48 hours. We like to move quickly through these calls and bottom line the information for you. We know that you are busy people. You have other things to do. We have a standard format. We spend a few minutes talking about the reinstitution and revaluation of the Iraqi dinar, which we continue to believe is the base currency for the potential reset of some of these other currencies. A few minutes talking about the program we've put in place to assist you. And then we go to a brief Q&A. So let's go ahead and get started. First, by way of disclaimer, Trusts Unlimited is not the purveyor of the dinar and these other currencies. We're not advocating either the sale or the purchase of these currencies. But as rather substantial currency holders ourselves, we're sharing with you the information that we think is relevant. Of course, the most relevant piece of information would be the potential window for the reinstitution of the dinar. Uh, for the last few weeks, we continue to cite January of 2021 as the most plausible date for the reinstitution of the dinar for a number of reasons, with the possibility of a reinstitution in October. Now, as we are reaching mid-October, the likelihood of a reinstitution in October is dwindling, and I'll be explaining in a little bit more detail why that's the case. But uh, January of 2021 really looks strong, and again, we'll be getting into that as well. First, uh, for those of you that were on the call last week, I had to uh, opt out of that call early because I had an opportunity to not participate but be uh, an inactive or a listener on a call that I thought would be important from our perspective. The call was not that long. It did not deal directly with the situation in Iraq, but it did indirectly deal with Iraq and the reinstitution of their currency. Some of the things they touched on was the fact that the United States had incorporated its Federal Reserve into the Treasury Department. Now, this is significant because the Federal Reserve, for over 100 years, has been a private entity, and it's now been incorporated in the Federal Reserve. In addition, they discussed the fact that substantial adjustments were made to the operations of the central bank and the Federal Reserve in the United States. This has a direct effect on the central banks worldwide because the central banks hold the United States dollar as their largest reserve currency. They also touched on sanctions for countries like China and now even Vietnam for arbitrarily devaluing their currency in order to corner, corner some of the global trade markets. And uh, as you know, uh, President Trump constantly talks about a level playing field. He has also declared China to be uh, a currency manipulator and instituted sanctions. Now, this is important because the only way to circumvent the artificial devaluation of a currency is to hand a, have a standard basis for determining the value of a currency vis-a-vis -vis other international currencies. The way to do that is Basel III compliance, and that's the direction we're headed in. The last thing is they did to briefly discuss Iraq. They talked about uh, progress being made uh, as a positive factor. Uh, they also said that uh, the EU was going to be upgrading uh, Iraq. They're moving them out of the... Uh, uh, terrorist nation status, and they're moving them from high risk to moderate risk for international investors. So again, everything is moving in the right direction, and things are looking very good for January. Now let's talk a little bit about exactly what's happening in Iraq today. The current fiscal issue has to do with the payment of salaries for the balance of the year, and of course their budget deficit. Now there are three methods that they can use to approach dealing with this deficit. One, they can utilize existing reserves. 
primarily the U.S. dollar, and those reserves are dwindling. Second is to borrow funds. And the third method would be to reinstitute their currency. Now, it's going to be difficult for them to utilize their reserves, again, because they are dwindling. But that still remains the most plausible way to at least cover the salaries, if nothing else, for the balance of the year. All future loans pursuant to a law passed by the Parliament must be approved by the Parliament, and they cannot be negotiated by the CBI any longer because CBI actions are now being monitored and regulated by the fin Finance Committee that was set up by the Parliament. With regard to the reinstitution, that cannot occur until they complete the project to delete the zeros and establish the education program both of which could occur as early as November 1st, which again gives us a glide path for January. However, there is a lot happening in Iraq in October and, and globally. The government of Iraq uh, has been overcoming a numerous attempts of the corrupt pro-Iranian officials to obstruct uh, the uh, country's trans uh, transition to a capitalist system. Iraq is also preparing for entry into both the Forex and the NASDAQ. The EU, as I mentioned earlier, has taken Iraq off the international terrorist list and upgraded its status. The U.S. has said it's prepared to remove the OFAC sanctions from Iraq, which will allow them to conduct international contracting uh, to rebuild their infrastructure. And the World Trade Organization is fast-tracking Iraq's membership. All of this is happening in the month of October. So again, it's highly unlikely that they'll be able to complete all of this in time for a reinstitution in October or even November. But it all, once again, is moving very comfortably toward January of 2020. The government of Iraq is also releasing something they're referring to as their golden plan. This is a plan that's been... Uh, put together with the Parliament in conjunction with the Departments of Labor, Social Affairs, and Immigration. And the objective of the Golden Plan is to develop $16 trillion in additional revenues over the next two years to pay salaries and other critical government uh, operations. First, they want to substantially increase oil production and this can only be done with the assistance of the United States and other nations, uh, Western European nations. And second, to stop all of the national theft from the uh, currency auctions and uh, the border crossings. So all of this is putting the clamps on the pro-Iranian corrupt officials and proceeding with the uh, establishment of a international group of countries that are going to be working with Iraq to rebuild their infrastructure. The uh, al Qasemi government is also preparing its white paper, which is a detailed explanation of the government's approach to um, all of the necessary interna uh, international and um, in-country reforms. Now, with regard to the CBI operations, and again, remember, unlike 2012, in 2014, the CBI is not being managed by corrupt officials within the CBI or the corrupt Maliki government. It's being managed by the financial committee that was established by the parliament. They've announced the issuance of the new $250, $500, and $1,000 notes to be used exclusively for interbank transactions and the release of the coinage, and the 10 25 50 and $100 notes to the citizenry. Now, $250, $500, dollars $1,000 notes don't seem like a lot of money. Interstate bank transactions usually involve larger tranches. The reason this is significant is why would the CBI issue notes as low as $250 for interstate bank transactions? The only plausible explanation is it's in anticipation of the reinstitution where a $250 note is going to be worth a lot more than one one-thousandth of a U.S. dollar, but more along the lines of three to four U.S. dollars. 
So that's all good news again. And again, it establishes a glide path for January. Lastly, the United States and Iraq have agreed upon a $20 million contract for the United States to construct the CLS air defense system. Now remember, the al Qasemi government is releasing the corrupt uh, officials' files, which deals primarily with pro-corrupt uh, Iraqi officials within Iraq. Donald Trump administration and the United States military have taken out Soleimani, the Iranian in charge basically of terrorism world, worldwide, and Muhandis, his number two man who was an Iraqi. Now they're building the air defense system. Now this is the last leg to the removal of um, the Iraqis, the, excuse me, the Iranians in Iraq. The United States military working with the UN is removing the Iranian militias, and the last remaining effort the, Iraq, the Iranians have is their occasional attempts to fire rockets into the green zone or to in other critical areas. And with the establishment of the CLS air defense system, that's gone as well. So slowly, methodically, Iran has been completely and totally defanged. Their money's frozen. They have virtually no customers for their oil. They've been almost virtually expelled from Iraq. And again, all of this is being done to give us a glide path of January of 2020. So this is very good news. I would have preferred for a number of reasons to have the revaluation, or excuse me, the reinstitution of the dinar in October. I've discussed in the past how from a tax standpoint, and in a currency exchange standpoint, that would be advantageous. Certainly, it would be advantageous uh, in prior to the election for this to occur from the standpoint of the Trump administration. But January, we're, look, we're talking three months here. So that leaves us actually not that much time to get our affairs in order with the holidays coming up. And to that end, Trust Unlimited has put a turnkey program in place to assist you. We must remember that most denarians are not wealthy individuals. They're hardworking Americans who, for the first time in their life, will have a substantial amount of wealth to deal with. And again, Trust Unlimited has put a turnkey program in place to assist you. It's a two-phased program. Phase one is pre-RV. Phase two is post-RV. Pre-RV involves the establishment of a pre-RV package of asset protection trusts with the assignment of your currencies on paper to that trust package. Post-RV involves all the product services and professional referrals that will be made available to you after the revaluation of the dinar and hopefully some of these other currencies. So let's start with phase one, which is again the establishment of your package of pre-RV asset protection trusts with the assignment of your currencies on paper to that trust package. Trusts Unlimited has established a package of irrevocable trusts for a very simple reason. It's the best asset protection available domestically in the United States. There are other entities that individuals can establish to provide some level of asset protection. For example, individuals can establish LLCs and sub-S corporations, and they do provide some asset protection, primarily by separating high-risk business assets from personal assets. However, the problem here is the possession of these currencies is a personal asset. In addition, courts have ruled that LLCs and sub-S corporations owned in the majority by either one person or a closely held group can be pierced for civil litigation. So that makes the LLC and the sub-S corporation inappropriate for your needs. Some individuals have established an entity referred to as a revocable living trust, sometimes referred to as a loving trust. Now the revocable trust can exempt your estate from the cost and delay of probate, and in some cases substantially reduce and even eliminate the federal estate tax. But revocable, living, or loving trusts can provide no privacy or asset protection. So they're going to be inappropriate for your needs. Some individuals have established in, uh, individual or single 
irrevocable trusts. And they will provide the best asset protection relative to the entities I just described. But there's an inherent flaw with an individual irrevocable trust, and it's this. If any asset or operation within that trust should get involved in civil litigation, that would necessarily bring all of your other assets and net worth into that litigation as well because it's all owned by that one single entity. The solution is to establish a package of irrevocable trusts because such a package can protect you both pre- and post-RV. But the package must be established prior to the revaluation of the dinar and these other currencies for a number of reasons. And I'm going to review them with you right now. First, by establishing this package of trusts, you will preserve your privacy and your anonymity. That's because assets within our irrevocable trust package are sealed, meaning that the general public will have no knowledge of your net worth or your actual holdings. Second, by establishing this trust package, you will be able to successfully avoid IRS scrutiny. If you are holding these currencies in direct title when they revalue, you'll probably uh, receive an audit from the IRS. And with the potential magnitude of this revaluation relative to your prior year's earnings, you're probably looking at a full-blown six-year audit. Such an audit would be time-consuming. It would certainly be frustrating because it's come along at the precise time these currencies you've revalued, and you have many more important things to do. And lastly, the cost of a six-year IRS audit would probably be more than the cost of our Asset Protection Trust. On the other hand, if your pre-RV Asset Protection Trust package is in force and you have assigned your currencies to that trust package, you will have successfully transferred the taxable event of this revaluation from yourself personally to the trust. Now, this is important for two reasons. First, there's only a 10% chance of an IRS audit if the taxable event of this revaluation were to occur within a rather sophisticated trust package such as ours. And second, and most importantly, even if the IRS determines to audit your trust, they can't do a six-year audit. Why? Because the only taxable event within the trust will be the revaluation itself. The third reason you'd want to establish this trust package is because within this package is a special gift subtrust. Philanthropic gifting can always be done on a tax-preferred basis, either pre- or post-RV. But in order to avoid a substantial 40% federal gift tax, you're going to need to give currencies to family and friends prior to the revaluation. Now, if you're gifting to individuals that you have no problem giving them the currency to exchange for themselves or giving them the U.S. dollar lump sum after you have negotiated the exchange, that can be accomplished outside of a trust with a standard gift letter. But if you are hesitant for any reason to give these individuals the post-RV lump sum, then you can gift to them through this specially designed gift subtrust within our package. And because you are gifting to them through this subtrust, their U.S. dollars and their privacy will be protected along with yours. In addition, the language of this subtrust will allow you to gift up to a certain amount of a currency or currencies, meaning you can gift to these individuals the exact U.S. dollar amount that you had in mind, irrespective of the exchange rate. And because you're gifting to them through this gift subtrust, you will be able to directly manage, invest, and distribute this money to these individuals as you deem appropriate. The fourth reason you'd want to establish this trust package is because it's been structured in such a way as to allow your estate to bypass the cost and delay of probate and the federal estate tax. I'll give you two quick scenarios. Scenario number one, you purchase 5 million dinar for $5,000. The day after that, those currencies revalue for $25 million. The day after that, you pass away 
leaving your heirs in a state of $25 million. Now that estate must go through probate, a process that ordinarily can take anywhere from 6 to 18 months. But probate is a public disclosure process, meaning that the general public will be aware of the size of your estate, who your heirs are, and how much they each stand to inherit. So if anyone feels they have a legitimate claim against you, your estate, or your heirs, they can simply file that claim with a probate court. And that could tie the estate up for years, and in some cases, even decades. And your heirs will have either limited access or no access at all to their respective inheritance until the probate process is completed. Then there's something called the federal estate tax. This is the tax that the federal government will assess through the probate process in order for that estate to be transferred to heirs. Under current law, approximately $10 million of that $25 million estate would bypass any federal estate tax, but the balance could be taxed as much as 65%. Now, this scenario is not only unacceptable, it's completely and totally avoidable. How? Scenario number two. You purchase five million dinar for five thousand dollars. The day after that you assign those currencies on paper to our asset protection trust package. The day after that those currencies revalue for twenty five million dollars. The day after that you pass away, leaving your heirs that very same estate of twenty five million dollars but this time protected in our asset protection trust package. As a result, there will be no probate. There will be no public disclosure of your estate. Your heirs will have immediate access to their respective inheritance, and the federal estate tax will be zero, saving your heirs as much as 55% of their inheritance. The fifth reason you'd want to establish this trust package is for some very specific asset protection benefits. One pre-RV, one post-RV. Pre-RV, this trust package will allow you to circumvent something called the Uniform Fraudulent Transfer Act. Now, what does that mean? Under our system of civil procedure, you can only be sued for what you actually own in direct title, or the value of property at the time you transfer it out of title to an entity like our trust package. So let's take the previous example from before. You purchase five million dinar for $5,000. You transfer the currencies to our trust. They subsequently revalue for $25 million. You begin to live a lifestyle more reflective of your newfound wealth. And a couple of years down the road, someone sees that you're living rather comfortably and decides for whatever reason that they're going to sue you. Well, this prospective plaintiff has a couple of problems. First, he or she better have a very strong case and very deep pockets because this trust has been structured in such a way as to make it extremely expensive and extremely time-consuming to pursue civil litigation. But second and most importantly, once any prospective plaintiff learns that pursuant to the Uniform Fraudulent Transfer Act, the only thing they could ever win by way of a civil award would be $5,000. The value of the currencies at the time you transferred them out of direct title and to our trust package, and none of the post-RV value of $25 million, there will be no lawsuit. Post-RV, there's a benefit I like to refer to as limited liability stop loss. This protects you from future bad acts after you have acquired this wealth. This protection is accomplished through a legal strategy called segregation of assets. This is why we've established a package of trusts, and this is how it would work. Again, we use the same example. You purchase five million dinar for five thousand dollars, transfer the currencies to our trust. This currency is subsequently revalued for twenty five million. Now that you have $25 million in trust, you decide to make some purchases. So you purchase a larger primary residence, a vacation home, perhaps a half a dozen rental properties for tax write-off and additional cash flow, 
a couple of cars, a boat, and let's say an RV. But as you purchase these items, you place each of them in their own separate subtrust to be managed by your master trust. Now, why is this critical from an asset protection standpoint? Well, I'll give you an example. Let's say one day you're driving one of your new cars. You have an accident. The accident is clearly your fault. And tragically, someone is seriously injured or even killed. Well, the family of the victims is going to want to sue you. But remember, civil suits are about monetary awards, and you don't legally own anything. So the plaintiffs would be left to sue the owner of the car that you were driving. Well, who owns that car? One of your subtrusts of which you are merely the beneficiary. And what's in that subtrust? Merely that one car and the car insurance policy. In that scenario, the car insurance carrier will negotiate an out-of-court settlement with the victim's family. You will not be involved in those rather unpleasant negotiations. The car insurance carrier will repair or replace your car, making you whole. And this is important. All of your other assets and net worth are safely protected in the other sub-trusts. Why? Because those other sub-trusts are separate legal entities or persons having nothing whatsoever to do with the accident in question, and the plaintiffs would have no standing to pursue those separate legal entities or persons. So your package of trusts work very much the way a commercial barge would work, where all of the valuable cargo is stored in a series of small compartments. Why? In the event that any compartment is ever breached, the only potential loss would be the cargo in that one compartment. The cargo in the other compartments is safe and secure due to the firewalls, and the barge will never sink. Now, the benefits I've described here are lost to you if you do not establish your package of trust prior to the revaluation of the dinar and these other currencies. Now, there is one other benefit, and it's this. If you are, in fact, the holder of one of our pre-RV asset protection trust packages, then you will be eligible to participate in all of the products, services, and professional referrals that will be made available to you after the revaluation of the dinar and some of these other currencies. I'll just make mention of one here today. Trusts Unlimited will be sponsoring a post-RV seminar to be held in Disney World, Florida, approximately 30 days after the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar. Present at that seminar will, of course, be the staff of Trust Unlimited to assist you with the management and funding of your trust packages post-RV. Many of our existing clients have already expressed a desire to establish scholarship funds, foundational trusts, special needs trusts, charitable remainder trusts, and even the more complicated 501c3 nonprofit and offshore trusts. And the proper way to fund those entities is with the direct transfer of funds from your asset protection trust to those newly formed entities. We'll also have our tax specialists at our seminar. With this newly acquired wealth, you're going to need and understand some of the more sophisticated tax strategies to minimize your tax exposure. We'll also have our independent fee-based wealth managers there as well. You're going to want to reposition assets after the revaluation of these currencies for a number of reasons. First, we know statistically that 95% of all windfalls, however large and from whatever source, are lost within three to five years due to inexperience, mismanagement, and fraud. We also know that under the new G20 bank bail-in provisions, the failure of banks in the future will no longer be made whole through the general taxing authority of the respective governments, but first and foremost by the confiscation of funds at those banks. So this is another reason to get the money out of the banks and at work in other markets. And third, we know the general global shift from fiat-based to Basel III compliant commodity-backed currencies in and of itself is going to create extremely volatile financial markets, 
and you're going to want a substantial amount of your net worth in tangible assets in order to avoid that volatility. Now our trust package is initially a package of 10 trusts consisting of one master trust that will hold your assigned currencies pre-RV, financial assets like bank accounts and investment accounts post-RV, and is empowered to manage all of the other sub-trusts. One gift sub-trust which can at any time be converted to a standard sub-trust and eight additional standard sub-trusts to hold physical assets like homes, cars, boats, etc. Now this was the simplification of a rather sophisticated trust package that we've utilized in the past for our more affluent clients, a package that had an initial cost of anywhere from six to ten thousand dollars. But about a decade ago, when we decided to work with denarians, we knew that price tag was going to be unaffordable for many. So by basically simplifying the package and deferring all funding, we've been able to reduce the cost to $3,000. Now, there are several ways you can pay for that. If you pay us up front, we'll discount the price further to $2,500, saving you an additional $500. If that's not possible, we do have a deferred payment arrangement. You'd make an initial payment of $525, which some would basically offset our out-of-pocket costs just to produce and deliver your trust. The balance of the $3,000 would then be paid in $100 installments. We will charge no interest. The only proviso once, is once the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar occurs, any unpaid balance would need to be paid within 30 days. With this approach, anyone that has the dinar in these other currencies and understands the need for getting their trust in force and their assets and affairs in place prior to revaluation should be in a position to afford to do so. One other suggestion, we do accept credit cards. Pay us up front with a credit card. Not only will you get the $500 discount, but the minimum payment on your card would be substantially less than $100 a month you'd pay under our deferred payment arrangement. But we will work with you in whatever method works best for you. Our objective is to help you get your trust in force and your affairs in order for all of the reasons that we've stated here on this call. Now, we will be going to the Q&A in just a moment. But again, for the benefit of our newer callers and those that will be listening to the replay, I want to tell you a little bit about Trusts Unlimited and why you should seriously consider contacting us to get our initial no-obligation package. Our trust package was authored by our attorney, Robert Bly. He's been a practicing attorney for over 40 years, specializing in the areas of estate planning, asset protection, and offshore planning. I myself hold degrees in political science, macroeconomics, and finance. I've been working in these areas for over 38 years, and I, along with my clients, were personally involved in the reinstatement of the Kuwaiti dinar in the early 90s. So between the two of us, Robert Bly and I have over 78 years' experience working precisely in these areas, and I frankly know of no firm that can make that claim. Now, Bob and I have been working together for about a decade in the areas of estate planning, asset protection, and offshore planning, and it has been disheartening from time to time to see people walk away from sound estate planning and trust creation because of the mistaken belief that by doing so, they have somehow lost control of their assets and their affairs. But in point of fact, under our system of civil litigation, it's when you hold assets in direct title that you can lose control of them or lose them outright. And it's at precisely those times in life that you need and want control. If you've lived for any length of time, you've either experienced in your own life or through friends and family things like unexpected divorce, permanent incapacitation, the onset of dementia, premature death and prolonged and complicated probate processes, then there are investment losses, business losses, and even bankruptcies. The number two loss of wealth now, courtesy of the information age, is identity theft. But the number one loss of personal wealth remains confiscation through civil litigation. Anything you own in direct title can be taken from you. So in point of fact, the only way that you can manage, protect, and control everything at all times and in all circumstances 
is through the establishment of a package of irrevocable trusts, and particularly if you have an asset like these currencies, that you're anticipating a substantial increase in value. And we at Trust Unlimited will do everything we can to help you accomplish your personal and financial objectives both pre- and post-RV as we understand them. So again, thanks for listening to the call. I'm going to be open in the Q&A. I suggest you have a pen and paper handy if the things we've discussed are of interest. I will give you our contact information. I strongly advise you to contact us and get our no-obligation package. It does contain everything you need should you decide to apply for uh, an irrevocable trust package, but it has a lot of information about us, about the revaluation, about trusts in general. So I'm going to open the Q&A. Two quick rules on the Q&A. We don't take service calls on the Q&A. Our existing clients can contact us by phone or email if they have a question. And second, for obvious reasons, in order to participate in the Q&A, your name and number must be on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and open up now. And while I'm waiting for any potential questions, I'd like to give you our contact information. You can go to our website, which is trusts with an S unlimited llc.com our email address is trusts with an s unlimited llc at gmail.com our phone service is 307 274 4122 if you'd like to listen to a recent conference call playback or if you'd be kind enough to refer us to someone that might be interested in our services you can either go to YouTube and then go to Trusts Unlimited, or you can go to IQD Calls and go to Trusts Unlimited, or you can simply dial the same number that you dialed for this live call this afternoon with the exception of the last number. Rather than dialing a 4, you'll dial a 3 and then use the same access code, which is 739-394-POUND. If you'd like to be included on our email list, you can go to our website, go to the bottom, enter your name and email address where indicated. You should be on our email list within 24 hours. Bear in mind that we only send emails out very periodically, pre-RV, but after the reinstitution of the dinar, emails may go out as often as weekly. So let's go to our calls. Our first caller here is area code 801, that's 801, go ahead. Jim, good afternoon. It's Clay Blackwell. How are you? Yes, sir. How are you doing, Clay? I'm doing fine. Listen, you said something um, in your presentation about the Master Trust and when going to your meeting at uh, Disneyland, Disney World, whatever it was, there'd be other trusts presented there. One was the, uh, the CRUT, which I was interested in. But it, it seems to me like you can transfer those assets from the Master Trust into any of these other trusts and without exposure to taxation. Is that true? That's correct. That's correct. The only issue at hand is what's the tax status of the revaluation itself. Uh, and we've discussed this before, Section 98082 of the Internal Revenue Code and six, Section 643B. Now, obviously, if those codes uh, are not um, honored by the IRS. I don't know how they're going to get around it. And certainly if Trump's reelected, that's not going to happen. But if they got around that and there was a tax issue, then, of course, transfer to other uh, uh, trusts or other entities or for other expenditures won't be a problem. However, if, in fact, 643B is upheld, meaning that the uh, gain itself within the trust is uh, tax-deferred, then that could raise a taxation issue if funds were being transferred out. That's one of the issues that we will deal with in our private letter ruling after the reinstitution. The other issue is, or the other strategy would be, is if you're pulling money out, not to place it in another entity, but for some sort of an expenditure, um, that we would probably want to negotiate a loan rather than pulling the money out and exposing it to a 50% tax. So. Uh, that, that issue is a little bit up in the air until the IRS and Treasury Department clarifies it, and they're intransigent until the reinstitution, in which case we feel we have a strong legal argument that they're compelled to respond. 
I would think any time you're pulling money out and not going into a legally deferred uh, entity, uh, you're going to get taxed to them to through the nose on it. So that I understand. My question is, if you're transferring it from the master trust to one of these other trusts, are these trusts living trusts or are they irrevocable trusts? If they're irrevocable trusts, my understanding is there should not, not be a tax consequence because you're moving it from one technically tax-sheltered entity to another. You're not taking constructive okay. receipt of the funds. It moves from, from A to C, and you'd be your B. You're not, it doesn't go A, B, C. It goes from, you, from the one trust to the other. You're not touching it. Okay, so if it's in a living trust, is that a taxable entity? Yes. Okay, that's my, that was my question because I have yeah, a, living a living trust, trust now. Trust. Go ahead. Yes, and I have a living trust as well. There's no tax protection. There's no privacy. There's no asset protection. It merely – It's just there um, for transferring assets then. And, well, exempting your estate from probate, and if, if it's an AB a living trust, then you can substantially reduce or eliminate the federal estate tax – People that are in really low-risk situations uh, and don't have a lot of wealth, but simply enough to perhaps trigger, although now with the new uh, uh, minimum, or, excuse me, with the new exemptions on the federal state tax, you actually got to be a pretty wealthy person to trigger a federal state tax anyway. But if it's, okay. a, if it's a revocable or a living trust, like I said, you have no tax protection or asset protection. Okay, can you, can you convert or amend the living trust to an irrevocable trust? You can transfer the assets to an irrevocable trust. It cannot be converted. It is what it is. Okay, so you can't, once it's done, you can't change it. That's what I'm asking you. No, a, a revocable trust, I mean, you can't turn a cat into a dog, okay? A revocable trust will always be a revocable trust. You can transfer the assets to an irrevocable trust, but you cannot convert it to an irrevocable trust. Okay, that makes sense. All right, well, that was my question. The other question I have for you is once it reinstitutes in Iraq, what do you think approximately what the window is? In, in other words, if it reinstitutes in Iraq, does that mean our currency automatically becomes more valuable, or is it just yes. once it's recognized on the – oh, yeah, okay. Yes, okay. it does. And, and we're looking for anywhere from 10 to 30 days for the global revaluation. In other words, take, basically what has to happen is – when they reinstitute, it, it makes no sense for them to reinstitute unless they're going to bring it in at or near or slightly higher than the dollar because they have to demonstrate to the IMF that they're utilizing their own currency and not the U.S. dollar in country. Once they've established that, it shouldn't take too long for them to come out of the global uh, program rate and reinstitute at you know, whatever the float rate's going to be, which in my opinion would be somewhere between 3 and $4. Okay, last thing. What's going on with Donald Trump? This is scaring me. He, it doesn't look like he has the support he needs. I mean, Biden's up by 16 points. Do you think Trump's base is enough to get him through this thing? Um, my, my, this, now, this is my personal opinion. I think That's what the, I'm asking for. I think the polls are complete and total crap. I don't think we should pay any attention to anything coming out of the media. Um, I think the only thing that matters are internal polls and the external. I mean, uh, why did they send uh, Michelle out there to trash Trump today or yesterday? Why did they do that? Why is uh, why is um, is Biden in Pennsylvania and not in some of the swing states? All right, I, you know, I, I just don't buy the polls at all. Uh, the oversampling is ridiculous. As a matter of fact, Rasmussen just came out and basically said virtually all of these polls are a farce because they're oversampling Democrats by 15%. Not only that, uh, they also say that the uh, Trump supporter tends to be a shy supporter, meaning that they just don't want to hear the insults in the, and, and all of that. So they just, you know, they're, they're just not as vociferous about their, you know, what they're doing. So uh, I, I don't put any stock at all in the polls. Um, the next 30, the next, well, let's say the next two weeks, I think, are going to be critical. Um, well, I honestly, debate, but I honestly believe, the, honestly believe that Trump's going to pull the trigger on this dinar thing before then. I think that's the whole reason that uh, Mustafa came over here to let him know, look, we're just about done with everything. If you look at some of the articles that are coming out of Iraq, they're just repeating themselves. They're not really saying anything. 
I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that, but you've got to remember, it's not just a matter of the United States, it's the international agencies as well, and they're not in love with Trump. So Trump all by himself probably can't pull the trigger, but you remember, this guy does a lot of things behind the scenes. He's not, he's not asleep at the wheel. He's definitely working at things. A good example would be all of the uh, peace ag agreements that they're doing in the Middle East. All, you know, no one knew what was going on, and then all of a sudden, pow, all of these things, you know, they were just announced. So I expect Trump to be dropping stuff on almost a daily basis for the next two weeks. All right. Well, thank you for answering my questions, Jim. Yes, sir. Take care, Clay. You as well. Okay, our next caller is area code three four seven. That's three four seven. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, I'm from New York. So, if Biden wins the election, would that delay the RV? Unfortunately, there's a distinct possibility that a, a Biden win could. Now, I, I can't say it would stop the revaluation but uh, of the dinar and these other currencies, but it could definitely postpone them for a while. Um, and we certainly don't want to see that. Uh, I, and I don't know why uh, actually these issues haven't been a little bit more brought to light. The previous caller, Clay, mentioned that. It's been on my mind as well. But once again, uh, Donald Trump's Forte is being underestimated. Uh, 2016 is a perfect example. One week before the election, they said he was behind 8 or 9% in the polls nationally, and he had a 3% chance of winning. The other mm -hmm. issue is this. The elections, the Electoral College, mm -hmm. it's not the popular vote per se. So um, I still, if you know, my money's on Trump, frankly. It just is. But, you know, you, you never know what's going to happen. But, but I do agree with you, a, a Biden win would be worrisome, not ultimately for the re, uh, revaluation of the dinar, but for the timing. This could drag it out for, for another year or so, and, and certainly I don't want to see that, and not, neither does anyone no, else. No, that, well, that, no, 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 but you said like three months, but let's say if in November, let's say if, if Trump loses, would they stop all that, all, would they delay all the things that are doing that going into the revaluation, or... They wouldn't, but but let's say Biden would probably be hesitant to approve it or something. Or would that be the reason? They would, would that be the reason? I don't they, think would probably be the way. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I I just stand back and look at it. The revaluation of the dinar creates anywhere from six to eight million overnight millionaires in the United mm -hmm. States. These people are not going to vote for higher taxes, the new Green Deal, bigger government, more regulation. I don't think it's any more complicated than that. Conversely, it would make sense for the reinstitution prior to the election because six to eight million overnight millionaires are going to not vote for Biden. They're either going to stay at home or vote for Trump. I mean, but that's just from a purely political prism. I don't know, you know whether Trump looks at it that way, but he's a smart man. I'm sure that's got to be part of his calculation. No, well, I mean, I'm sure you watched the first debate. Like, do you think that, and plus he has, he has COVID-19, you know, do you think that will, um, obviously that will hurt his chances or improve it or it would make a difference? No, as a matter of fact, all you got to, the media is apoplectic about the fact that he's already out of the hospital because it destroys the narrative that this is a debilitating illness. Mm -hmm. The mortality rate is 0. .0007, which means not only is it not a pandemic, it's not even an epidemic. The mortality rate for COVID-19 is lower than the flu, and it doesn't even have a vaccine. So I, I don't think that's, that's an issue at all. As a matter of fact, he's got that off the table now, because not only is he not going to contract it between now and the election, he actually has the antibodies. So I don't think that's an issue at all. No, no, but, but another thing, like, like, did you watch this, this first debate performance? Like, what did you think of, what did you think about the first debate between Trump and Biden? Well, let me put it to you this way. If you go, I rewatched the debate. The, all of the interruptings came from Biden. That's who started it, and he was also interrupted routinely by uh, Chris Wallace. The uh, poll numbers for, 
for uh, for Trump were solid in his base, but in the black and Hispanic community, they say he won the debate by a margin of two to one. So despite, once again, what the media is saying, I just think there's a huge swatch of people out there that are, frankly, seething with what's been going on in this country. They're not blaming Trump, and they're just waiting for November 3rd. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Okay, bye-bye. Again, when we get into the political stuff, I'm just giving my opinion. I pay attention to this stuff. I have a political background. I know a lot of these individuals, uh, which is why I've been fortunate enough to get on some of these calls. Uh, But again, this is just my opinion. Um, So our next caller here is area code 405. That's 405. Go ahead. Hello, uh, Jim. This is Doug in Oklahoma City. Hey, Doug. Yes, sir. What's up, Doug? I have a few questions today. One of them just a sort of a uh, an observation. Um, if it doesn't happen in October, then really our best bet is it is for it to happen in January from a tax standpoint because it gives us so much more time to not only wait for our own personal exchange uh, for the rates in the banks, but also for the tax issue. So. If we get through October, I think the best thing for all of us would be just to kind of hope that it happens in January. My, my drop dead date would be November 15th. After that, then, then we're pushing it. But you're right. I mean, I, I'm okay. You know, if it doesn't happen in October, I'm okay with January. Yeah. And then you're right. That we don't have to work, that you're exactly right. We, we, the tax issue won't be relevant until April, and that gives us time to hold the currency if it should come out at an artificially low float. Uh, we could stagger our releases depending upon how things go. So, I mean, stagger our exchange. So, yeah, I agree with you totally on that. So you had mentioned that once this thing um, reinstates in Iraq, that it would give leverage for the ability to go to a bank, i.e., as a represent, representative for all the trust holders and say we want as a group to be able to negotiate a very good, not exchange rate, but the um, spread well, rate. Well, both, both. The fees and the exchange rate. We want the best street rate available. In other words, we're not, we don't want our people to go in there and have to haggle with you. I want your best deal. I'm calling all of the banks, period. All right? When, okay. Once it reinstitutes, it's, an, it's a viable currency. And all, once we tell them how many clients we have and estimate how much currency they're holding, then we're in control. Um. From that perspective, you mentioned that you thought that it might go to three or four dollars, but the initial reinstatement rate might be at about a dollar. So, I guess it's a timing issue as to what everybody individually feels comfortable in doing as far as when they go to their selected bank based on the rate posted that day. I agree. Well, you know, you know, it's it's the poker argument. Everyone's, you know, some people are really good at it. Some people suck at it. <laughs> you know, it's just the way it is. Um, and some people, you know, here's a guy that's never had two nickels all of his life, and now he's looking at five or six million dollars. He just wants to do his. Ex- he'll take that. He'll just do his, ex- and that's fine. He's a low risk guy. He's not really knowledgeable about investments. He never thought he'd see that kind of money. Our hope is that he doesn't go and lose it by dealing with the wrong people or making bad investments. So, you know, if, if a guy with a net worth of $200,000 is now worth $5 million, great. He, why, why, why play games and try to make seven or eight or $10 million? Take your $5 million. Yeah, and would you, do you think that this would be on a daily posting on the Forex at, at some time after the – Oh, well, yes. Well, once, once, the, once they come out of the program rate, right, then you'll see the rate every day. It'll just be like every other currency. Okay, very good. Um, now, remember, one other thing I mentioned, what happened with the Kuwaiti dinar, most people don't understand that most people lost money on the Kuwaiti dinar because most people purchased the Kuwaiti dinar after it reinstituted above 350 It reinstituted, it went up, I believe, as I recall, over 7 bucks, but within two or three weeks it was back down to 350 So people were buying it at 4 5 6 and 7 and boom, two weeks later they were 350 So... Right that's possible it could happen with these currencies. So what 
you know, what the inexperienced person should do is take your money and run. The guy that's a wealthy guy already, he might be an accredited investor. He might say, well, look, I'm going to go in and I'm going to, I'm going to uh, exchange uh, a third of it at, you know, 350 and then I'm going to exchange a third. I think it's going to, as it's going up, and then, you know, it's all house money after that. So, you know, it depends on the individual, their net worth, their experience, their risk tolerance, their your time frame, all you know, a guy, I, you know, I'm 68. I'm different than a guy that's 38 with three kids. So, it, it's it's it depends on the individual. Well, the 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 benefit if it happens early in the quarter is you could just sit. You could Precisely. sit till almost the last day of the last month of the quarter, and you know, watch the rate. Okay, so that 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 helps me too. Uh, second question: What? it was the mechanism or could you uh, do you know and explain more about how the federal reserve was rolled into or even taken over by the treasury i think that's probably one of the most significant statements in, in our century honestly ever since woodrow wilson screwed it screwed everything up i mean that that to me is phenomenal is that is that is the is the treasury have oversight over the federal reserve now yes now People need to understand what the Federal Reserve is. Constitution provides for the people to create their own currency, but that's not what happened to the Federal Reserve. Really, to be honest with you, the progressive movement today is nothing more than the reincarnation of the initial progressive movement uh, from the early uh, 20th century. What they did was they they created a private corporation called the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve then literally prints money, creating it out of nowhere. They then lend the money to the federal government. The federal government, in turn, taxes us to pay the interest on the loan from the Federal Reserve. What Trump is doing is he, thanks to the the protection, I forget the name of it, the act that he's operating under, under these auspices of this new act, was empowered to move the Federal Reserve into the Treasury Department. So now it's no longer a privately run entity. It is under the auspices of the Treasury. In my opinion, and again, now we're getting to my opinion, I believe what Trump is doing is he's loading up the Federal Reserve and the Central Bank with all of the bad debt. He's going to bankrupt the Federal Reserve. And then we're going to go back to the original constitutional intent, which was for the federal government and the people to to print their own currency without debt. There's no debt uh, applied to it. As a matter of fact, right now, all of the money that's being printed is at, I think, almost zero interest. So, you know, this is basically uh, money that's being disseminated to the people to purchase goods and services, to keep their family going, to keep their businesses functioning. But the federal government does not have to pay any interest on that money, which means we're not going to tax people to pay the interest on that money, which is why he has the tax holiday. Well, if you go back and you look at historic pictures of U.S. currency, it wasn't until after um, 1914 that the script on the currency changed to a Federal Reserve note versus the currency of the United States of America. And, uh, you know, so that's that's kind of an indication that that's when they usurped the power of the printed uh, currency for our nation. But anyway, uh, last question. Um, you mentioned that Vietnam is a currency manipulator. Um, as such, it seems to me that the potential for any kind of um, increase in value of the dong is going to be put on hold for a while until that uh, situation is uh, rectified. I think that they took their lead uh, in their commerce uh, workings from their neighbor China and basically said, look, if China can do it, we can do it, and uh, we need to be an export nation to build our economy, and and, and that's what they've done. And so uh, your opinion on the on the future or the, the significant uh, potential for reval on the Vietnam uh, dong, please. Okay, now, <clears throat> I will put them in the general class of a man, uh, currency manipulator, but not for the same reason as China. China is a currency manipulator because they have intentionally and arbitrarily d- 
devalue their currency below what every rational person knows it's worth. The situation in Vietnam is that they are in a program rate and have been for decades, meaning that their currency is worth next to nothing. The difference is that the Vietnamese have not taken a proactive approach like China. They've taken a more uh, subtle approach, meaning they're just not doing the things that they need to do in order for that currency to come out of a program rate. They're letting it ride. But that's different than what China's done. They've aggressively, proactively devalued their currency. Vietnam's currency was devalued pursuant to what happened in Vietnam, and they're just not doing anything about it. So, uh, you know, that's basically the difference. But the result is that, you know, they uh, uh, have trade uh, imbalances with other countries where they have surpluses against other countries because of their currencies uh, being artificially lower than what it should be. It's just for different reasons. Okay, so if they're not proactively doing something, the potential for this happening, in my opinion, is somewhere in a near time frame to a, a dinar reinstatement is probably down the road three or four years at the minimum. I would be surprised if the dong does not revalue within three years of the dinar, only because the dinar is is going to be, um, how do I say this? It's the first domino. I think it's going to have an, uh, a ripple effect, and a lot of things are going to change. Um, the perfect storm right now is Iraq for a lot of reasons, geopolitically, um, economically, uh, from the global currency stand, it's just there's a lot going on. It's just a linchpin to a lot of things, and uh, of course, when Iraq's currency does revalue and their their economy just takes off and it's to the betterment of their people, countries like Vietnam are going to see that and they're going to look back at China and go, no, 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 we're not playing these games anymore. We're gonna, you know, we want to get in the game. We want to be a, a legitimate player. We want a viable currency, uh, you know, for all of the right reasons. All right. As always, thank you, Jim. Have a great day. Sure. Nice talking with you. Bye bye. You too. Okay, our next caller is area code three one two. I'll take a wild guess that that's less. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. How are you? What's up, my friend? Pretty good. How you doing? Man, I'm doing fine, thank you. Good to hear. And to hear. Yeah. And in regards to your comment about the polls being off, I agree. They are one-sided, have always been one-sided, and I don't think it will ever change from being one-sided. <laughs> and, you know, the other issue is this. If, 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 if Biden really had a 16-point lead, why are the blue states all attempting to get rid of the Electoral College and have vote by mail? Why would any of that be necessary? If he's up 16 points, this is a walk in the park for him. Yeah, you got a good point there. Yeah, so it's all my you know. times of voting, I've never seen a poll. I've never been approached. I've never seen anything right. electronically. Where are these polls that they're taking? Well, like I said, Rasmussen basically came out and said that their analysis shows that all of the major polls oversample Democrats by 15%. You know, mm. and uh, you know, yeah. and you know who's, and the thing is, they said even among Democrats in this in this thing that they released, blacks and Hispanics were underpolled among Democrats, and blacks and Hispanics are voting for Trump in greater numbers than any Republican has seen in what thirty or forty years. So, I mean, the last Republican to do really well, I think, was Reagan. So, you know, it's, you know, the, the, yeah. the polls can't. There's how can a guy shuffling around in his basement in his robe and slippers be 16 points ahead. It just makes no sense. <laughs> well, I know one thing. I'm voting for Trump, and I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's going to be real interesting to see what happens. Um, yeah. My, my concern isn't just the revaluation from a selfish standpoint. The things they're talking about doing, eliminating the Electoral College, Stacking the courts, getting rid of the um, uh, the filibuster in the Senate, bringing in new states. Basically, what they're doing is they're creating a democratic uh, 
the one party majority is what they're, they're destroying the republic i mean it's 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 frightening what they're what what they're actually wanting to do so you know tonight's debate might be pivotal yeah i gotta watch uh, that tonight's debate's going to be pivotal but once again what did the republicans do they the guy that's doing the debate is an anti-trumper and he worked for biden when biden was a senator he was on biden's staff like who 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 makes these decisions can't they get a genuinely object i don't have i don't need a right winger just give me someone that's objective for god's sakes right right but they just can't they just, i don't know what's going on i don't know what's going on but I, this debate is going to be interesting well we'll this see one, i think it's going to be more substantive um i always say it's Pence probably is, been he's probably been informed of the uh moderator and his one-sidedness yeah, well, it's just going to be i just think that kamala harris is not going to do well trying to do to uh, Pence, which she actually did with Biden. I mean, she took Biden apart. She, I don't think she's going to be able to do that with Pence. So, well, you know. Biden has no proof of anything he's accomplished the 46-plus he years he's been in office. No, but what she did was she went after him on his, on his shaky past with regard to racial issues, referring to uh, yeah. uh, uh, desegregating the schools as a racial jungle, uh, saying that uh, Bird, who was you know a, a grand cyclops of the KKK, was his mentor. But, uh, you know, Pence doesn't have any of that in his. You know, you know he doesn't have oh, any of that. Boy. You know what I'm saying? So it's it. it you know. Yeah. In other words, the personal attacks aren't going to fly with Pence. The guy's squeaky clean. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see. Well, let we'll me get to my. Out. Yeah, let me get to my question here. Um, with. The meeting that you were in last week, was there anything that was said that you cannot mention to us? Today? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, but with it was nothing, information. But it, was nothing, it was nothing that was critical to our concerns. Let's put it that way. Okay. All right. Now, with the information regarding the Federal Reserve, and the Treasury. Uh, why would that be important or something being mentioned in that meeting? What's the importance behind that, them knowing because, or them disclosing because that? Because the, 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 the United States Federal Reserve is the most important, and the central bank is basically in the center of the hub of the central banks globally. Remember, the United States, in terms of the IMF basket of currencies, the majority there is the U.S. dollar. In terms of the central banks globally, the largest reserve currency is the U.S. dollar. Iraq and many yeah. other nations right now are functioning on the U.S. dollar. When a country's currency devalues for whatever reason, they are, and, and there's hyperinflation, they're forced to acquire the U.S. dollar. That's what Iraq is doing right now. So it's, it's the ripple effect. What happens to the U.S.? Okay. The Federal Reserve okay. Central Bank has it necessarily has an effect on all the other central banks. Now, the other concern is basically, if Trump is reelected, it probably means the end of the central bank system as we know it. It certainly means the end of fiat currency as we know it, and it means that the inter the World Trade Organization, the UN, all these international agencies, the WHO, they're going to have to clean up their act big time okay and that's all I can say about that okay <laughs> okay that's that's fine I was waving someone past me but uh, no. that's all I have that's all the information I have or questions that I have thanks again sure for taking my sure, call and do. say hi let's to the professor say. Will do. Let's just say the information on the call, there was nothing bad on it uh, uh, with regard to us, but it wasn't directly about the revaluation. But the implications of some of the things uh -huh. they discussed bear on the, the reval of the Denarni's other currencies. Fair enough? Okay. Fair enough. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Take care. All righty. Take care. Bye-bye now. Les was our last caller for this afternoon. Again, I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to listen to this call.
I certainly hope that you newer callers will contact us to get our initial no obligation package. Again, it has a lot of information about us, about the revaluation, about trusts. Um, although you are free to contact us if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Uh, there'll be no consultation fee, but the decision to proceed is entirely yours. Our next call is scheduled, of course, for next Wednesday. Certainly, if something of a dramatic nature were to happen between now and then, we'll try to get out an emergency email and schedule an emergency call. Failing that, we will be back next Wednesday, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great week, and thanks for listening.